Hej, välkomna till Finansinstitutet. Där är Tora Somen institut in. Welcome to the Finnish Institute. Uh, my name is Janne Wikman and I'm in charge of the, our seminar program here at the Institute. And I see some familiar faces, but for those who haven't been here, uh, we are a cultural institute and we promote Finnish culture and society in Sweden. And uh, well, the aim with our seminars uh, is to, to uh, well, provoke some debate, discuss uh, uh, various topics ranging from foreign policy, defense policy, to education and sustainable development and design, for example. And uh, today, this discussion, it's going to be an introduction to Sakari Pipo's uh, exhibition, photo exhibition, that will be opening in about one hour, some uh, political observations uh, in Finland. And, uh, well, um, the topic for this discussion, how intrusive can a photographer be? We're going to talk about the health of democracy, freedom of speech, ethics, very big questions. And we'll see how far we get in this discussion. But I just want to make a short presentation of our distinguished panel. We have Mari, Mari K. Niemi, <laughs> and uh, you are a newly appointed um, appointed director of a new research, uh, research platform at Vasa University, and you have a long experience, experience as a researcher also, and you are a, also a political commentator. So when there are elections coming up in, in Finland, she's all over the television, this lady. And then we have Ville Blofield, also from Finland. You have a background as a journalist, various newspapers, magazines, various positions in Finland. And uh, you also uh, have a, a show, or what could I call it, at the Helsinki radio called Tasavalta, the Republic, yes. where you discuss uh, daily politics. And I wanted to describe you as like... Uh, a Janne Josefsson light, a dis, uh, um, well, uh, well, I don't know, an investigative journalist, but well, something like that. And then we have Paul Hansen, you are very familiar to the Swedish uh, audience, working as a photojournalist at Dagens Nyheter, and you have won a lot of uh, domestic and international awards, and uh, well, I think this photo moved all of us. I, uh, I was crying uh, this uh, photo when the small dead children was uh, carried with by uh, their father to a funeral. I think that's, that's a memory from your pictures. And then we have the moderator. I will give the floor to Jenny Sanne Rosqvist. She's working at the Swedish radio and uh, is also a foreign correspondent in Finland. So please, the floor is yours, and I hope we can get a very fruitful discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Jana. Uh, and hello, welcome to the audience to this discussion with the headline, as Jana said, how intrusive can a photographer be on ethics, political censorship, and freedom of speech? Uh, we are here, and we are talking uh, about this because of the photographer Sakari people who is in the audience today, uh, whose picture we're going to look closer at later in the exhibition. Uh, the exhibition with the name Some Observations on the Political System in Finland. Uh, I just want to say the Sakari people was working for the Prime Minister's office in Finland, taking quite ordinary pictures of the politicians, and some less ordinary, like this one maybe. Uh, when he, through his camera, started to notice things that the most of us didn't notice like how someone tied his shoes, another always hold his hands, uh, or arms, etc., etc. He wanted to publish these pictures online in a web magazine, but the employer, the Prime Minister's office, forbid him, because they thought the pictures were too intimate, and uh, they were stopped. 
So we are opening for questions later on, but we start the discussion, as you heard with Marie Konyemi. Uh, she also, I have to say that the, one of the topics she has worked with as a researcher is um, around the mediatization, uh, including the ways uh, politicians try to use and control the media, and vice versa, the media use politicians. Uh, Ville, as you heard, Helsinki-based journalist, uh, mostly print, but lately a lot of radio and TV focusing on politics and current affairs. And Paul Hansen, uh, he takes very serious pictures, we know that, crying, as Jana said, when you see them. But I happen to know, uh, through a common friend who has worked close to him, that he has a joke for every time. He's the Gothenburg humor personified, this is said. So even if he's working in a dangerous situation, ask him for a joke and he delivers it with proud. Anytime, she said, when she heard that we were going to meet tonight. So I have to ask you, Paul, do, do you have any joke for tonight? Fake news, fake news. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we, we, we'll, leave that, we'll leave it with that. But I start with you anyway, because you are a photographer yourself. Are there, if you start with that question, are there any limits for how intrusive a photographer can be? Oh, the question is loaded, and I guess that's the reason why you're asking it. Uh, yes and no. I mean, there's so many variables in the answer, so I can write a thesis about it. But uh, uh, are you talking about uh, covering politicians or in general? I think in general. Oh, in general, you're making it even worse. Um, I, I always, personally, I always try to follow the golden rule. I mean, treat everybody else like I want to be treated. And that's the bottom line. And then out, out of that, there's always situational uh, conditions that puts limits or, or sometimes you have to be intrusive, sometimes you shouldn't at all be intrusive at all. So I can't really answer that question. Maybe you can look at the picture we were talking about from the Gaza, because there you have taken a lot of pictures yourself that can be seen as intrusive and wonderful as well. And of grief and sorrow. This I just have to correct uh, you a little bit because this is uh, the Hajazi children, two children yeah. that were killed in an Israeli airstrike in 2012. And, and their father is not carrying them, it's the cousins of the father. Yeah. The father is dead a bit behind them. He's also dead. Uh, and the question was? No, but, this is but too intrusive? No, I mean, uh, how do you think when you take a picture like this? Where, is, where are your limits then? What do you think? Oh, uh, if we put the question in this context, uh, the problem is usually, as I uh, experienced at least, the uh, opposite. Uh, you were indicating a little bit about politicians using media, the media using politicians. In this uh, context, when it is war, I mean, information and uh, at very much pictures, very much pictures are used as, are weaponized and used as propaganda tools. So we are very aware of when and how and in which context we produce and publish pictures. And this is the, the problem, or there is sometimes the opposite problem, uh, because we are sometimes even physically pulled into the morgues or to the hospitals, and people ask us to take pictures that we can never publish because they're too gruesome. Uh, and sometimes it's because of they are just grief-stricken and they want to show the world, and sometimes it's political reasons. It's up to us, with our knowledge and our background, to try to sort things out. Mm -hmm. Marie, if we go to you, what is your opinion? Is there a line you can uh, draw between freedom of speech and, uh, and ethics when it comes to these pictures? Very difficult question. About this one, I started to think, would we see the same pictures if they were Finnish or Swedish children? Is it kind of easier to, to go really close when, it's, when, the, when the topic or the target is more away from us, when it's not like our children. So they become more as a symbol of something that we try to tell the story on. And it would be more intrusive if it was something that happened in Finland and there was a dead child. And it would be more close to your kind of understanding, knowing the people, knowing the family and so on. And this is something that is so far away that it seems more okay for us maybe to go close with the camera. And if we think about pictures of politicians, is there any mm. limits there, or where are the limits then? I would say it's about the context, in a way. I mean, I, I don't want to say that there are pictures that you, you shouldn't... Like, for example, the pictures in the exhibition. I mean, they are pictures of politicians, and I don't think there is anything that should be, let's say, uh, not, not that, that you, you wouldn't be able to publish. I, th I think it's totally okay to publish them. At the same time, I do understand that but there are people who are public figures and they, there are conventions how we see people, how we tend to show people in pictures. And sometimes, I don't know if it's a question of freedom of speech, it's also a question of conventions. For example, 
if somebody's there running in the wind and snow and, and you have your nose running and you have your makeup around your face and, and you, may, you might not want to have that kind of picture published, is it a big problem in the terms of freedom of speech? I don't know. But I think we all have certain ideas that what kind of pictures are kind of, what is the convention of showing people in, in pictures? And I think the something that photographers should be doing is try to test those limits, try to test the conventions. When they do it, of course, some debate begins. Mille, what do you say? One thing that I started to think about here when, when listening to you was, was that when we talk about how close you can go with the camera or, or how, how intrusive you can be in a situation, you, you need to remember that there is a difference between also for a journalist, for, for a photographer and, and for a writer, writing journalist, there's a difference between gathering the material and then publishing it. So it's, it's uh, to think that, uh, to talk about wh what you can do in a situation and where you can go with the camera, that's, it's not the same debate as, as the debate on what, what you're going to publish. So it's the, the journalist then does his or her work there between when we decide what, what, what we're going to use from from the material that we gather. I think that's one layer in this. Yeah, and if we, in this actual case with Zachary Pippo's uh, pictures, <clears throat> the Prime Minister's office stopped the uh, pictures from being published online because they they saw, thought about too intimate. And they saw a risk that uh, these pictures could worsen the disregards of politicians. What do you, as a journalist, think about that uh, opinion? No, well, it's super silly, of course. It's just. <laughs> Plain stupid, but I think with the, I think uh, in the Sakaris case, the it's it's a question of the institution. I think it, it I don't maybe Sakari knows this better or, or has uh, insight that I don't. But but I think that in the case in the end it, it came down to um, like messing with the institution, and that's something that that's off limits in Finland somehow in in our culture. We we're very serious about. Or we respect our institutions very highly in Finland for some reason in the culture and 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 here the the, the thing was that it was uh, Sakari was um, working for the prime minister's office and for so it was like we're talking about the ministry not the actual people in the pictures I feel that was the I think that and that's why and the people working for the prime minister's office somehow felt um, responsibility to to guard the institution that they work for. I think there was mm. some, something like that. Maria, you have studied this, how politicians want to use uh, media and vice versa, and don't want to be in media mm -hmm. this time. What was your reaction when you, to this, what we call it, maybe not censorship, but yeah, mm -hmm. when, you, when you heard it, about it? Well, I think they wanted to stop these pictures being published because they wanted to avi avoid kind of negative publicity, and obviously trying to stop these being published was more negative publicity. It, it really sends a wrong wrong message. And I think the, the whole thing there is politicians these days, they want to be like everyone else. They really want to be seen as normal people, not somebody who is like part of the elite somewhere high up. But at the same time, they want to be normal people in their own terms. Like in Instagram photos. Yeah, they want uh, to be seen as people. caring caring parents or they want to be somebody who loves nature or somebody who, who does ordinary things, wears a pullover and, and so on, goes to the cottage and whatever. But they don't want to be seen as normal people, as somebody who whose um, no, kind of hair, hair, hair in the nose you see or, or whose skin is a bit this and that and, and who has a little bit tummy and shirt is a bit too tight and, and these kinds of things. They don't want to be normal in that sense, but in more like branded way, normal. Mm. Paul, what, as a photographer, what do you say about this uh, kind of pictures of politicians? Do you understand that they don't want to publish it? I just have to rewind to the question before yeah. about children being dead here or there. Uh, I don't think it's a, a question about nationality, it, you, because if you ask the question, could we take a picture of a Swedish child or a Finnish child, you have to move, take the whole topic. Okay, then you have to put Helsinki under occupation for 30 years, and then you have to put uh, kill 200, 2,000 people and 500 children, and then you can ask the question. You have to compare the whole situation, not just take one single picture. You have to put the question yeah. into context. Into context. Uh, I think, uh, they, like you, you said, they shot themselves in the foot big time. I mean, we are here looking at the pictures in the exhibition, and they kind of, one reason why I want to see the film uh, about Stalin is because Russia banned it. <laughs> It's so stupid. I mean, I, it, for me, it also seems to be a total lack of um, 
self-irony, self-respect, self-imagery. Uh, I mean, they don't have any sense of humor. I mean, these pictures are warm, they're not cold. I don't see anything, him making fun of them at all here. They are shown as normal people. But can picture of politicians be, uh, like in pictures of politicians, be a threat against democracy, as you see it? Can it ever be it? I don't think so. Uh, I think you can take a picture with a, with a good intention. So you can take a picture with aesthetic intentions. You can take a picture with political intention. Of course, you can. I remember a colleague of mine took a picture of Carl Bildt. He was then prime minister. Uh, he was eating a McDonald's, and then he saw the photographer, and he smiled with a mouth full of, and it was like onions down in here. <laughs> and I, I think publishing that picture was not good. I mean, that was made with bad intent. I think, uh, but. We have the right to publish it, mm -hmm. but, and if Carl Bildt would have said, you can't publish it, we, we, we had the ob obligation to publish okay. it. So it's a very big difference if you shoot uh, somebody who is in a weak position or in a powerful position. It's interesting when you mentioned this picture of eating, because while I was living in the UK, there was a picture published on Ed Miliband, who was at the time the leader of the Labour Party, and he was eating as well. And it was really not a pleasant picture for him. And, and the de debate that's, that was created after that, people were questioning if he's sane. He, he was seem like, they, they said he, he seems like animal-like. This, this person cannot possibly be pr become prime minister. Look at him, look at him. And he was like, look at yourself when you eat. I mean, it's, mm. it's just the conventions of how you publish them, but they can be quite powerful. And, and, it, and it was really negative to him. And he was just eating. But of course, in, in, when we're talking political journalism, then, then there's always the balance, or, or you should have the balance between uh, how, you, how you picture, uh, you know, people on this end of the island and these pe mm. people on the other end. And, and then there, I think there can be a debate on, for example, in Finland, on how, wh what kind of pictures we select or show on female politicians compared to the mm. uh, men yeah. in politics. And, and, and these kind of, you, I, I'm, 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 I want to think that you can, uh, you can show politicians in, in, in animal-like situations, if you like, but then you need to show all of them, mm. or you need to have the same standards for, mm. for everyone. Yeah, not just one politician from one party. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But, but, uh, but what do you say about who has the right then to stop the picture or decide? Well, in this Sakari's case, the, it got complicated because Sakari was working for the prime minister's office, so they kind of tried to make the case of that they own the pictures because they have been Sakari has been taking them while working for the prime minister's office. So it it goes a little bit um, away from the basic journalistic yeah, but um, we, debate. If we're talking just the journalist pictures and the no, the, the, the journalist picture. alone, of course. Mm -hmm. There's no the the subject should have no say in, in, in what pictures are s selected to publish. So Paul, is it you the, you the decider, is it your editor who decides? Oh, well, I mean the journalists, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so, but you, do you, think you mean you down to the machinery? Yeah. Uh, it's me, mm -hmm. it's me, yeah. But, but there's been incidents where I can come back with pictures and maybe the story is the basic story is not so flattering for the politician. And I've been asked, do you have any picture where he doesn't smile? And I say, no, because he smiled. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not going to go out and make him look bad for this because there's an angle. It's not my job. But you can always decide if the picture is going to be published or not. No, I can decide the basic selection. And that, mm -hmm. that has yeah. a big say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So who do you think, Mari? Who is going to own the picture? I think they are professionals in, in this sense, and, and I don't think there should be any other say, especially from the politician's view. Or, But, but I, I kind of understand the debate in terms of the organization. If I think about pictures that are taken of myself, if university takes my pictures, I'm much more brutal in saying, like, you are not going to publish that one, and I don't want, that. well, we like it, and I don't like it. So just, you know, throw it away. And when journalists take pictures, they take whatever they want, and they publish whatever they want, and I have no say on that. And but I think that's the, even more so when there are people who actually have power. So, But you're saying that uh, politicians, they are powerful people, they, are, they have to live with it. You can take bad pictures of them and publish them eating and things like that if you, if you are, uh, if they are equal. But, um, but how bad is it that politicians or the press officers, like in this case, uh, want to stop a picture? 
the politicians want to intrude in that mm -hmm. way? What do you think? I, I think that makes really negative impact on them. I think we are so Finns, and I think Sweden, we, we have the same, same debate, that we really highly value the fact that we have freedom of speech and we want to see us ourselves as, as somebody who is really on the you know taking the leading leading the way for, for others as well so if we then start doing that kind of decisions that you know that somehow limits the freedom of, of press I think it's it's really it, it's there's more negative impact compared to the actually seeing some pictures where people are natural and, and I think we need also need to trust on people who see the pictures they don't yeah. uh, Kind of, if you see somebody a picture of person like speaking or they have a funny face or whatever, you don't necessarily think that this person, this is like the whole truth of the person. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so just how bad, Paul? Do you think it is that politicians want to stop pictures? I, I, th I agree totally. It hits a nerve in our you know basic freedom of speech system, of course, and it shouldn't be done. Uh, but I think we should maybe for a second take away the word picture out of the context oh. and say, instead of say maybe it's a quote they want to. Well, I I don't I didn't say that. Well, you did. Because that happened to me when we had a, a minister that said <coughs> he wanted to change his quote. But the problem was he said it three times. So, I mean, it, it's the same kind of basic problem. Because yeah. if they want to stop the flow of information, a picture is just an extended... It's also a visual, it's visual storytelling piece. You can view it as that. So if they want to stop that, they're trying to stop the free flow of information. And that's a big problem. This, I think this comes, comes back to to the basic uh, uh, problem that I many times have with people that, I, uh, that are subjects on, on my stories. If I do like a profile story on someone for say a magazine or a newspaper and then I send the story for them so that they can review their quotes or, or check the article before it goes to print and then we start to argue because the, the subject feels that it's, it doesn't show her or him in the way that she or he sees herself. So, so she feels that uh, she thought that the article would be uh, a reflection of her self-image, when in fact it is my image of the person. And I think this it's it's the same thing with the pictures. Uh, you need to understand that the that the images that are uh, the texts and the and the pictures that are uh, in the media, they are not um, reflections on 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 the subjects themselves, it's, they are reflections on, on what the journalist thinks or sees in the situation. So often does that, does that happen to you, that the person wants to change the quotes or change the... Very often, yeah. And then I, I get the feeling that some, some colleagues um, in the history have been um, more open to a discussion in that field, so that the people that... Uh, People that I interview also feel that they have, they or they think that they they uh, have that power to change something afterwards, which they don't. But if you look at these pictures, uh, Sakari people's pictures, it can also be seen as you were talking about pictures of the people, as mm -hmm. uh, anyone, uh, the true pictures of politicians. Uh, that shows that they are human, like the rest of us, not just uh, like Ibermenich. Mm -hmm. But um, how important can that perspective to be, be to, to show them as persons? I think it's a, it's a very valuable and very beautiful message, actually, and and I think it would be a very it would be very um, it would be very um, important for the people to realize that the people in power are are also just ordinary people with their ordinary um, mindsets and and, and, uh, and reasonings and, and and you know what what not. I think it's a uh, it's a very powerful me powerful message actually. Paul. Yeah, I agree. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, I'm, I'm thinking about all these stories I've been done with politicians because I've once I was encountering a situation where the politician, who is uh, basically responsible for a very big scandal in Sweden, she resigned. Uh, and how do you evaluate her the day after she? I mean, the minute after she resigns to the minute before. She's once a, she's a politician now, and then she quits. So can you treat her the same way, I mean, as a visual storyteller or photographer, before or after? Oh, in, the, in this instance, yes, because her responsibility was still lingering, I mean, of course. But it's, it's still also a human question, like you're saying, or we're all saying, they're almost also human beings, so if this person, she walked up in the woods and she started crying. 
where is your own limit? That's also a question for an individual storyteller. So for how long time is, uh, is she still a position? I depends on, yeah. let's say that it was not in this case, but let's say there's a court case coming. She's going to be responsible for this issue mm -hmm. a long time. What do you say? Well, I would maybe take the perspective of, of how the whole um, kind of branding of politicians has changed as well, and how, how uh, political parties and, and politicians, how much more they actually pay attention to the image that they are giving to people. So they, it's really hard marketing. There is more and more finances, more and more money is allocated to these kinds of activities. And then I think what is really important, we, we really need journalists, both photography and, and, and writing and all kinds of journalists who are critical and who are challenging this picture. So we don't only see our politicians mm. through the brand that is sold to us. And I think this is kind of important thing to see. So yes, they want to be seen as human because that makes them less um, maybe vulnerable to the criticism that they are, like we have this populist debate that there is elites and then there are the average people, normal people. So it is important for politicians to be seen that they are normal human beings. They want to do it on their own terms, which I very well understand. Publicity can be quite hard. So but it's- Do you think that's why also the branding is important now that it's also that because of that we limit this? I, th I actually think that we, the Finnish journalists are uh, quite good nowadays in being critical on the politicians um, as, as uh, individuals. But, the, the, but, but where, we, uh, where we're not that savvy, I think, is, is being critical to the institutions. I think we, we, are, uh, we take the uh, personalities from the politics and we, we take the politicians themselves and we, we um, are quite critical of them. But then, say uh, institutions like the office of the prime minister or any ministry or what, th there we are. We are much, much more like. Um, also, as journalists, we like to just trust them, the institutions, and not not look at them in the in the same critical way. This is a really interesting point because I think they are seen quite neutral. Yeah, they are just yeah. kind of. We, we don't exactly. think that they are without I ideology or yeah, politics. or without yeah. trying to to sure. push any agenda or trying to sell it, sell or buy yeah. anything. Yeah. I mean, it's more like they just are there. Yeah. And we, we and, and I think it's it's really kind of dangerous also yeah. to stick to personalities because then you can really lose a bigger picture. There's lots of people working and, and to what direction they are going and what they are doing. I think this is really yeah. important message. Uh, Paul, do you see a difference if you compare to Sweden and, and our relationship to the I, I think it's the same problem in Sweden. I was, it was a very valid point. I never thought of it about, about that. But then, I mean, it's also the politician tendency, politicians or people in power. I, I don't like the word politicians <laughs> because power players, I mean, the biggest politicians call themselves not politicians. They're not a part of the elite. They're not the outsiders and so on and so forth. So people in power, they usually try to intimate, be, get intimate with the voters or prospective voters to be a certain way. And we fall into that trap. Uh, in both positive and, and negative, because like we, we criticize them as people, mm. not as parts of a big machinery. Mm. And that's a big problem here too. The branding is very hard, but we also look at them more as persons. They have to take more shit as persons. Mm. Uh, but if we talk about the photographers and uh, how they are exposed and the people want to, how they want to look, uh, how important is uh, what you say called true value in photography? Um, that is a picture that's not, uh, that is an original picture, it's not uh, oh. uh, my, my, The picture we saw, no, no, okay, let's see. <laughs> no, it's extremely, extremely important. And not only that, it's uh, the pic things, things in the picture is in, in the picture at the actual place. That's not you know, digitally altered. But it's also, I mean, uh, going back to the picture I took of the Hijazi children being carried to their funeral in, in Gaza in 2012. Um, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu, uh, not for my picture, but uh, half six six months later or something like this, he accused Palestinians of showing uh, beautiful dead children for the media. So he was in fact blaming the children for being too good looking as dead. So uh, manipulating pictures can be done in many different ways. I mean, uh, people, a convoy with uh, aid uh, with refugees from Syria was bombed presumably by Russian aircraft, we don't really know. And then the Assad regime called the, all these pictures fake. 
So it's very, very important that we do not manipulate pictures at all. Any pictures. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, would, I, would, uh, I would argue that it's, okay, it's okay to manipulate pictures outside the framework of, of uh, news photography. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm like, talking about news, yeah, I'm not talking about yeah. advertising, because yeah. I don't trust advertising. Yeah. So what, what kind of pictures, yeah. so yeah. Chris Avila, what kind of pictures are... You know, uh, art, or, you know. Yeah, that's of, different. Yeah. Well, I, I agree, but at the same time, when I see a photo, and I wasn't there, I never know what else was there that I'm not shown. So it's kind of, you know, wanting them to be really authentic, and then how you can be dishonest in so many ways. Mm. Also, by, by, it, it's not only that you start doing photoshopping or whatever, or cutting you know, later or something away. It's already when you choose which direction you shoot, or where do you go, and, and how do you, your perspective and everything. And are they okay to ask people to do a special thing to take a photo that was N News pictures, no. Uh, but I, that's a really, really good point, because... Uh, in this instance, it's the same uh, approach you have to politicians, people in power. You have to be honest to the story. If they mean ABC, we have to tell the people they're saying ABC, not screwing it so it sounds like something else. If I go into uh, a soccer f uh, field like uh, Rosunda or Friends Arena here in Stockholm, and the, let's say there's, I don't know how many people can fit there, 50,000 people. And there's a public, uh, there's an attendance record this day when I'm there. There's 30,000 people. But it's still 20,000 empty seats. So if I take a picture of the, only the empty seats, it writes Friends Arena this day. It's, a, it's an authentic picture, mm. but it's not true to the story. So that we have to be all the time. We're always subjective when we take pictures. Compared to a text, we don't, if you have an interview with you for two hours, I'm not going to write 50,000 words. I'm going to pick and choose. It's the same with pictures. And because we pick and choose, I, my favorite quote is that the, uh, the journalists should uh, leave chasing the truth to the poets. So like, because in, in... That's poetic. I, I, think, I think it's correct. Because in, in, in journalism, it's always picking and, and showing little snippets and, and making... Um, um, yeah, it's never the, the truth of the situation. But I also have a good quote there because I was trying to pitch a story to one of my editors and I was quoting Björn Nilsson who is a very famous uh, cultural writer at uh, Express and he's deceased now but he once said that uh, journalism's, the mission of journalism is not to, to simplify, is to make things complicated. But then Matthias Hermansson, uh, editor at my paper, he said, he turned this on its head and said yes, but we have to uh, show people, that we have to express the complicated in a simple manner. Yep. That's journalism, yeah. and that's extremely true for pictures. Yeah. If I go to a, a, a scene or, or a funeral or whatever it is, and the, behind, the story behind this scene is very, very complicated, mm -hmm. but I have maybe three frames of one thousandth of a second each to explain it, of course it's going to be subjective. Mm -hmm. but so why are some pictures more provocative than others then? What is it? Politicians. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's about conventions, how we tend to how we tend to see people in pictures. I think there are traditions, and when you kind of stretch them to do something in a different manner, I think that's one part of the story as well. I think it'll be interesting to, to hear how the Swedish audience sees these Sakaris pictures, because mm -hmm. now, now to look at them without the con uh, context of, of Finnish politics and knowing the politicians and, mm -hmm. and somehow knowing the... Maybe it's quite similar here, but the, know the way how we talk about politics and stuff. Mm -hmm. It, it, it's an, 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 an another way of looking at them. And this is a, one picture is very good. You're going to look at it later. It's uh, one, um, uh, I think, the press officer maybe that had been putting uh, X's over the pictures that not allowed to show. And it's so interesting because they almost look alike, all of them. <laughs> it's difficult to see why is this one not okay and why this, is this one okay. Yeah. So look close to that one if, and see if you can understand it better than, than we could when we looked before. But um, did we come in a way? Did, could we sum it, sum it up? Uh, could we draw a line between freedom of speech and ethics, or was it just from situation to situation and uh, politicians branding themselves? What do you say? Oh, me. Sorry. Yeah, you can start. <laughs> oh, why always me? Um, well, freedom of speech trumps everything. If you talk to, if you if you cover the power, people in power, of course. I mean, that's the basic rule, and it's going to be take a lot for me to uh, change that. 
I think it's, I liked what you said earlier, uh, your biblical quote in the beginning of, of treat people how you want, want to be treated and then to stay true to to the uh, quest of, of, of showing the, a truthful picture of what you're covering. Then after that, you must have like total freedom on, on mm. If you, you if you have this co if you have these two co covered, then it's then you can uh, then you can publish anything. I think. When I was uh, yeah. So, yeah yes uh, I like that too very much. So, but also sometimes when we do complicated stories, we also tell the backstory. The, our access to this area is made during these circumstances. Mm -hmm. So in some you you have your gold the golden rule. You have your own. Uh, voice uh, interpretation and then you also sometimes have to tell the story. Yeah, so you have limits yeah. because you're you are traveling or with the too much access, government's so it makes uh, army or something. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but when I was asked to lead this discussion, um, I thought about what situation I would like to be pictured in. And I have to admit that I'm a really bad loser. I'm a really good winner though. I'm <laughs> quite humble and I'm um, comforting for the loser, but I hate to lose myself. And I, I don't think or I, I know that I'm, I'm not a very good person by then. I don't look good by then. And I don't want that side of me to go public because I'm not proud of it. Uh, I said, you, you don't want to have that kind of pictures out, that side of myself. So before we met today, I asked you three to think about a situation where you yourself would like to be pictured in a close-up or something. Somebody, if we start with you, have you thought about that? Thing? Yeah, and, and just generally, I don't, I don't. My, my private life is really private, so I would find it really, really disturbing to have any pictures of my private life being shown. It doesn't have to be anything special. I mean, just generally, because I don't like it to be public. And and then, well, I think I'm quite vain. I like to see pictures where I look good. If I don't look good, I don't like it. But I don't do anything. I mean, it's just pictures are pictures, and everybody's allowed to to have them. And and I think it's. Like you said really well earlier, that it's the, the kind of how, how the photographer or the journalist sees the target. And that's, mm -hmm. that's their view, and they are totally entitled to it. And, and I'm happy to use my camera and go and take pictures and publish them as well. Paul? All the time. <laughs> uh, that's for your photographer. Exactly, then. <laughs> yeah, I hate being behind the camera. I'm going to steal, uh, or I was going to be vain as well. I'm, I'm, my, honest answer is that I don't like pictures of myself where I don't feel that I look good. Mm -hmm. I only like pictures of, of myself where I think th that I look good and then mm -hmm. it's, uh, you know, most of the pictures taken of, of me are not those ones. Because, <laughs> yeah. you know, because well, well, we're all... You have a special picture of yourself that... No exactly, remember. exactly. Because, <laughs> yeah, I'm, we're, all, we're all as bad in this, yeah. but, mm -hmm. yeah, that's my honest answer. You have a special side you always put to the camera. Like of course, I, I like think everyone yeah. has. Yeah. I have my Your camera face, and, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I do my hand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You look powerful. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's also interesting, how you want to look at the picture, how you stand. And maybe that's mm -hmm. also why the politicians want to look in one way. They want mm -hmm. to look powerful, maybe mm -hmm. not like... Or two ordinary people. Mm -hmm. uh, I said we were we're going to open for questions. Anyone want to put a question for the? Hello. Yeah. Uh, not so much as question, but uh, one memory. A few years ago, when uh, Pärsöi was prime minister, and he was sitting in uh, Nobelfest, and he did like those pictures which were published. Uh, he had put elbows on the table, which is. Definitely against in the dinner. Not even home. <laughs> or maybe home you can put your face on the bed. <laughs> yeah. But he had elbows on the table. And then, uh, probably it was, so to say, important telephone call. He was mobile telephone in the ear and one elbow <laughs> in the table and talking in Nobel Fest dinner. <laughs> And that was on the picture. And he that picture was published. Remember it? Yeah, yeah, but it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> All the TV cameras had to yeah. him. So he could not say that it's uh, because it was live. <coughs> so he could not uh, say that he didn't do it. Mm -hmm. He could not say, stop that picture, don't publish it, because it was already on the live. And then one other memory, what I wasn't alive at the time in the 30s, about eight years something ago in Russia, when they didn't have trust for one person in the picture last year's 
a picture of the uh, their uh, minister or whatever it was. The next year they published the same picture, but they reduced face <laughs> off the face and one elbow of the person, but they forgot to face off his legs. When people looked at the picture, they could see there are one extra pair of legs, but the face was missing. This brings that to my the way how they do pictures. This makes me think of, of Vanity Fair's that cover. Was before uh, any electronical system. Sure, sure. But now, I think now, yeah. last, last, last month or, or now, this current number of Vanity Fair, they have this Hollywood issue. And in the cover, Reese Witherspoon has three legs. Yeah. Which is the yeah. 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 Exactly. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And you can always think, did she like that picture of her? <laughs> So Anyone else that want to put it back? No. Yeah. Yeah. Could you comment on the if you remember in Finland there was the picture of Marie Kiviniemi, like you mentioned quickly about this, like the female versus mm. male, how they are photographed. Like, do you think there is like a limit that you can take a picture of uh, female politicians, like? But or something and published that. Or you you that mean like you mean the one when she was in the party conference and she was climbing the stairs, yeah, mm -hmm. and, and she had she had a dr pink dress yeah. on, yeah. and and I think it was, it was also with the I think it was paired with the text saying something that she has a, some it was some it was referred to her body as well. There was something that it was kind of story on her where they were also kind of admiring how amazing body she has and so on. Mm. Which is totally out of limits, I think, when we're talking about the prime minister. You you would never choose that angle uh, when talking about a male prime minister, I think. So why do you think that angle was, angle was, was public? Be was it? Because she was female. Mm -hmm. And because of the picture. And, and also she was the second female prime minister in Finland in history. But do you think it was because this is a good picture? We do something mm. with that? No. Quite rarely you see pictures of politicians from behind. Mm. Very often you, you see face in a way mm. or another. And there was nothing else. It was more like, you know, climbing the stairs and you see her, like, shape of her body. Mm -hmm. And I think that was the story. And also politicians reacted quite strongly. Yeah. Stefan Wallin was a, I don't remember what was his position, but he was one of the cabinet ministers. And, and he reacted and said, this is totally, like, not acceptable way of, you know. Who published it? What kind of paper? Respectable one, of, paper. one of the big evening yeah. papers. Respectable yeah. paper. Yeah. Yeah. But our evening papers are considered to be very <laughs> professional and and I think they are normally and, and I think they don't compare to what you see in the UK and so on I think they are very kind of very moderate generally what do you say Paul what difference do you see in in how you female and male uh, now just commenting on this I, I guess there's male chauvinist pigs everywhere uh, even in editorial boards in Finland <laughs> even <laughs> even it <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I was being ironic <laughs> Yeah, I think I think it's changing rapidly. I think this Me Too movement has done wonders. Uh, it's I mean it's it's a quick rift, uh, so that many peop women in weak positions, even if they're politicians, uh, have a, a stronger position. Uh, I think, and male chauvinists' uh, um, reflexes are held back for a while, at least for a while which is really good. I mean, I remember when I worked for the Express and newspaper 20 years ago, we took, I mean, I didn't, but I can't, I'm not going to name names, but there was very different pictures take, taken of female uh, party leaders than, than male. Very different. I mean, there was even one with, of Gudrun Schumann, who is head, head of the left, communist, well, former Communist Party, Vänsterpartiet. She was only dressed in an umbrella and high heel shoes. Yeah. Yeah. It was viewed as a good picture. Yeah. We hated it. While I was living in the in the UK or in Scotland, there was also a picture of Nicola Sturgeon, who is the first minister of Scotland, and it was manipulated. She was this kind of reckling ball picture, very very sexist, and I, and I think the the publicity that that came after that was really negative on the paper. So I think it's it's really backfiring if you if you do that these days. So audience is also more sensitive and and reacts quite strongly, especially because she's also a politician that was really highly admired from both. Not, not only in Scotland, but also in northern, northern England. Many people really, really see her as a really amazing politician and really strong, strong female politician who, who really knows her stuff. And then when you kind of sexualize her in a way that she doesn't go on doing herself, it, I think it would be more, audience would be more open to it if you would have a female politician who is, 
who is more flirty and so on. I won't say, I don't say that it would make it more okay, but I think for the audience, when you see a politician who is really skilled and really good at what they do, and then you actually try to kind of hit them with their gender, I think then it's more, more difficult for the, for the ones who do it, and, and they, they don't really get any good feedback on that. Uh, Paul was mentioning the Me Too movement. If you look in Finland, how important has that been for? It's been, <coughs> it's been. Uh, we're coming a bit behind in it in uh, with the discussion. Uh, say after the U.S. and and the rest of the Western Europe and and Sweden and then, but it now now it's actually catching up in Finland and it's it is huge there as well. But you think that will change how you? Uh, picture female or male politicians, the difference between them? Or do you I think, think it's, 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 it, is, it is, it's changing the culture, I, I think, yeah, rapidly, and, and also in this sense, yeah. But we still have big problems in terms of gender and, and expertise, for example, still in Finnish media, less than 30% less than of interviewed exp experts are women. So more than 70% of experts who we hear when you read and, and see Finnish uh, journalism, they are men. So I think this is, and, and then when you think what kind of roles women then get, women do get to the papers as well, but they are not, it's, it's really overwhelmingly male expertise. And, and that kind of, it, it, uh, it affects the way how we see people. And I think it's really important to talk about that as well. Uh, we have a actively uh, a gender, we count gender uh, in the paper, and there's an email going from uh, the editor uh, congratulating the department was 50-50. Not only experts, there are all, all, all the people that are mentioned or interviewed. Uh, I remember one week, the, the culture department was like 45, uh, 55, and then one male uh, uh, freelancer mentioned seven men in his text, and people go, shit. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I love the way uh, Trudeau, in Canada, the Canadian premier, once said that uh, I'm, 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 I'm a feminist, and I'm going to keep saying I'm a feminist, and people do not react to it. I mean, the Fotografiska here in Stockholm, the, the museum, uh, on March 8th, they have a, a difference in, in, in fee. It's 150 for, for a female, 167 something for men. The same difference on the estimation. Um, yeah, the, the female or the male politicians might be, uh, yeah, you say, still they are. Uh, they're shown different ways, mm -hmm. and they are not exposed as much, maybe, the female still. In Sweden, maybe, the visa female is a very good way to find experts in, mm -hmm. <laughs> in, in, in different gender and, and what you want to have. But, uh, are there any, any more questions popping up, yes. or are we going to sum this up? Can I say one yeah. more comment and go back to Sakari people's pictures? Yeah. They are mostly on men. Why is that? <coughs> Politics in Finland at the moment is really male. It's really male. We have large parties are led by men, so therefore also the, the most important portfolios in cabinets, they are in the hands of male, men, male politicians. So that's also one perspective to the issue, like who do you see as, as political leaders in Finland and as the decision makers? Yeah. It's most way, way more years, men yeah. than it was maybe 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really different situation. So it's not that we are only moving forward, we can go sometimes a bit backwards as well. Yeah, I moved to Finland 2011, and there were Marie Kivinie, we had mm. Jutta Urpilainen, yeah. and yeah, a lot of... That was then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want everyone here that take the thought with you that when you enter the exhibition, uh, that to think what you, situation you yourself don't want to be photographed in. Because as the Cherokee said, don't judge a man before he walked a mile in his shoes, or his moccasins, there's a difference between, I don't really know what's fake news or not. Or as the author Nell Harper Lee wrote in her classic To Kill a Mockingbird, one of my favorite books, by the way, you never really know a man until you understand things from his point of view, until you climb into his skin and walk around in it. So, um, thank you, Marie, Ville, Paul, and the audience. Uh, let us now climb into the eye of Sakari Pippo. Through his camera in the exhibition, some observations on the political system in Finland. Thank you.